Welcome, everyone, to our Eucharistic celebration of the Epiphany of the Lord. Out of respect for the liturgy and those around you, please silence your phones at this time. We continue to honor the COVID-19 guidelines outlined by the Archdiocese of San Antonio in regards to Mass and other liturgical celebrations in response to recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We ask that you pay close attention to the directions from our ushers as they will be your guides throughout the Mass, during communion, and at the end of Mass. Thank you for your patience and assistance. Please stand as we begin the celebration. In the name of the, the Father, and of the Son, and of the, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year's, everybody. Yes, we are still in the Christmas season as we have our manger still up, the nativity scene. We, we celebrate Christmas until... The baptism, the baptism of the Lord. Of the Lord. Wonderful. Wonderful. You guys, you guys got, it. got it. That's a liturgical, That's a liturgical celebration. Right? A lot of people are already taking already their taking Christmas their trees down, down and, their and their decorations. But liturgically, we're here, we're until, here the until the baptism of the Lord. Of the Lord. And, we, and celebrate we celebrate today the epiphany, the epiphany of the Lord. We celebrate the three wise, wise men bringing their bringing gifts of gold and frankincense of myrrh to the baby Jesus because they recognize Christ in their midst. The question, the question we have to be, have asking, to be asking ourselves, ourselves is, do we recognize, recognize Christ, Christ in our midst? Our midst. My brothers My and brothers sisters, and sisters. As we, as we gather together, together to, prepare to, prepare to prepare to celebrate this mystery of God's God love, love, let us call let to call mind our failures, failure, the times time that, that, that we have failed in recognizing Christ, Christ in, our midst, in our midst, the times, the times that we have failed, we have failed in, listening in listening to his, to his words. words. Let us ask let us our Lord for peace and pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I 
and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us us pray. pray. May the splendor splendor of your your majesty, majesty, O Lord, Lord, we pray. pray. Shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading, a reading from the book, from the book of the prophet, the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. Rise up Rise in splendor, splendor Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Your light, Your light has, come. has come. The glory, the glory of, the of the Lord shines, shines upon, you. upon you. See, See darkness, darkness covers, covers the, earth, the earth, and thick, and thick clouds, clouds cover, cover the peoples. The peoples. But, upon but upon you, you the Lord, the Lord shines, shines, and over and you appears, appears his glory. His glory. Nations, Nations shall walk, shall walk by, by your light. Your light. And kings, kings by your shining, by your shining radiance. radiance. Raise your, Raise eyes, your and eyes and look about. And look about. They, all they all gather, gather and, come, and to you. come to you. Your sons, your sons come, come from afar, from afar and, your and your daughters in the arms, the arms of their nurses. Of their nurses. Then, you, then shall you shall be radiant, radiant at what you see. What you see. Your, heart your heart shall throb and overflow. And overflow. For the riches, For the of, the riches of the sea, sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans, Caravans of camels, of camels shall, fill shall fill you. Dromedaries, Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from all Sheba, from Sheba shall, come, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming, and proclaiming the, praises the praises of the Lord. Of the, Lord. The, word the word of the Lord. Of the Lord. judgment in down the king and with your justice the king's wisdom he shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. kings of Tarshish, and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lies of the poor he shall save. Lord, have A reading, a reading from the letter from the of St. Paul, Paul to the Ephesians. To the Ephesians. Brothers, Brothers and sisters, and sisters you, have you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given, that was given to me for your, for your benefit, benefit. Namely, namely, that the that mystery, the mystery was, was made known to me by revelation. By revelation. It, was it was not made, made known to people, people in other generations, other generations as it has as now it has been now revealed, revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 
that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. The Lord, the Lord be with, be with you. you. A reading, A reading from, from the Holy, from the Gospel, Holy Gospel according, according to Matthew. To Matthew. When Jesus when was Jesus born was in Bethlehem, Bethlehem of Judea, Judea, in the years, the years of King of Herod, Herod, behold, Magi from, from, from the east arrived in Jerusalem, Jerusalem saying, saying, Where is the where newborn is the king, king of the Jews? Of the Jews? We saw we his saw star that it's rising, rising, and have come to do him homage. When King when Herod, Herod heard this, heard this he, was he was greatly, greatly troubled, troubled, and all Jerusalem, and all Jerusalem with, him. with him. Assembling, Assembling all, the all the chief priests, chief priests and the scribes of the people, of the people he, inquired he inquired of them where the where Christ the was, to be, was born. to be born. They said, they to, said him, to him, in Bethlehem, in Bethlehem of, Judea. of Judea. For thus For it has been it written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and asserting from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at his rising preceded them, until he came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, they prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. Rise up in splendor, St. Luke's Catholic Church. Your glory has come. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. Amen? Amen. You know, as we come to the end of our this Christmas season, you know, the gifts have been opened, the eggnog has been drunk, you know, the turkey and the ham has been eaten and all the cookies have been eaten, and we're saying, what's next? What happens next? And then, boom, New Year's Eve happened, right? It's like one thing after the other. Here's New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's, everybody. And all of a sudden, what am I doing about New Year's Eve, my, my re re resolution that I'm supposed to be making, you know, losing weight, working out, 
It says, that came too soon. I'll, I'll do it next week. You know? Yeah, next week. I got too many. I got still family over. We're still going out. We're doing Mexico pilgrimage. We're doing this. We're doing that. We'll wait till next week. And the next week comes, and uh, you know, we got the Super Bowl party coming up, you know. We can't, we can't, we can't miss that, you know. Let's, uh, let's do it next week. Okay, let's do it next week. But this is kind of how our life is. You know, we, we put things off. We fail to seize the moment. Now. To live in the now, not for tomorrow, for it to come tomorrow. Not to live in the yesterdays, but to live in the now. To do it now, not for tomorrow. And I, and I love the epiphany. That epiphany that we're celebrating today, because it seems like from one solemnity to the other. We just had the solemnity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of God. Now we have the solemnity of, of the three wise men. And we call them the three wise men, the three astrologers. They're known as the three kings. But they're bringing their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh to the baby Jesus. Their gifts of, of royalty, the gift of holiness, the gift of spirituality. And he's bringing their gifts to the, to the baby Jesus. But it's a beautiful image that they traveled probably over a thousand miles, a thousand miles, in search of this which is greater than themselves. And I think we are all on a journey. I think about this year of 2022 begins the first day of the next 365 days. And this is the beginning of that chapter. And how do you want to begin this chapter? How is this chapter different from other years? What are you going to do differently this year in the ways of many, maybe in relationships, maybe in, in, our, in our health, maybe in our spiritual life? But what are we doing differently in, in the ways of our searching for God? That search, because the wise men, the three wise men were in search of something greater than themselves. And I, and I, and I really want to, to y'all to really be thinking our journey that we're on. Think about that. Think about this journey. You know, it reminds me this, this journey that we're going on. Sometimes it feels like it's a merry-go-round. Sometimes we feel like we're on a roller coaster. But this journey that we continue to go forward. And what are we doing in the ways of searching God? Where is God in my journey? Where is God in my life? And all the decisions that I've had to make, where is God? So we talk about the three wise men. So they're on this journey in search of something greater than themselves, and it brings them to Jerusalem. But that's not where their destination is. But they told the king there that they're in search of, of another king. And of course, that worries him. But King Herod says, I'm the only king here. So he felt threatened. He said, well, let me know when you reach to this king, uh, this king of the Jews that you're talking about. So it's very powerful when they get here, you know, they bring their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But it's a very powerful image because they're not even Jewish. But what do they do when they see the baby Jesus? It's a very beautiful image of what do we do every Sunday at Mass in the ways when we see Jesus here in the Eucharist, what do we do? There were a time in the history of the church when we would kneel because this is the proper way of receiving our Lord. We would kneel like so and receive in Jesus. That kneeling is a sign of respect, the sign of acknowledging I'm in the presence of something greater than myself. I am in the presence of the Lord. So I get down on my knees for my God. They took away the communion rails because of, Father, you only got one hour to do Mass. And not everybody could, could kneel to receive communion. So what are we doing now? We're, we're bowing. We bow before our, our Lord to say, I do believe that I am in the presence of my Lord. But the three wise men, the three, the three astrologers, the Magi didn't just stop with the kneeling. They did something profound. 
They knelt before their Lord and they prostrated themselves on the ground like so. They prostrated themselves because they realized that they were in the presence of God. They were in the presence of something greater than they could ever imagine to be. And they prostrated themselves, showing that sign of respect and holiness. One of the last times I prostrated myself like that was on the day of my ordination. I prostrated myself, showing to God that I am a servant of God, that I am a humble servant. We prostrate ourselves before our Lord because we recognize that God is in our midst. And the beautiful thing about the three magi was they recognized God in a baby Jesus. They recognized God in their midst where many people failed to do so, but they did. And they weren't even Jewish, but they saw Christ in their midst. Sometimes in that spiritual journey, we're going to walk right by Christ and we're not going to recognize him. Christ is going to be in disguise. It might be in the homeless man on the street at the corner. It may be with our, our relatives that we're arguing with. Maybe with our husbands or our wives that we're struggling relationships with. It may be with our own children who are being strung out with, with drugs. We fail to recognize Christ in our midst. We fail to recognize Christ that came to be with us. The manifestation, the epiphany is the manifestation of recognizing the realism of God in our midst. And you shall call him Emmanuel, for God is with us. But that's not the way the story ends. They had a dream not to go back the way they came, to go back a different way. When we have that Christ encounter, when we have that experience, and it may be on an axe retreat, it may be a death of a loved one, it may be a birth of a child, but whenever we have that epiphany moment, something's changing. I'm no longer the same person. Something's happening to my life and I'm recognizing it's Christ that's happening. I'm not that same person. The Holy Spirit is taking over and I'm no longer that person. Those three wise men realize they can't go back the way they came. They gotta go back a different way because when you had that Christ encounter, your life has changed forever. My brothers and sisters, we've had that experience We've had that epiphany. We've been up the mountains. We had that Christ encounter, and our lives are being changed forever. We're no longer the same person. We turn away from our sinful ways, and we're being closer and closer to God. And we're on this journey, this journey in search of something greater than ourselves. And when we come upon that something, when we come upon Christ, when we recognize Christ in our midst, our lives are being transformed. We're no longer that person. When we were at St. Dominic's building the church, I had the privilege of designing the baptismal font. I always had the vision. I was taught very well at Oblate School of Theology and at the Washington Theological Union that when you go through the waters of baptism, your life is being changed. You cannot go back the way you came in. So the first thing I told the architects is you got to design the baptismal font where there's an entrance and then there's an exit. But the exit's got to be different from the entrance because you're no longer that person. Your, your life has been transformed. The Magi's lives were transformed. They couldn't go back the way they came because when you had that Christ encounter, your life has been changed forever. When Isaiah wrote this book, when he told them, rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. They're in exile. There are people in, in need of hearing something good because all they've gotten was bad news after bad news after bad news. They're saying, where is God? They were in search of something greater than themselves. But they didn't lose hope. They said, God's got to be here. And Isaiah reminded them that no matter how bad things may get, 
that the light is shining and that light is Jesus Christ. And he's given that light to us. From the time of our baptism, we have been giving that light. What are we doing with that light? How do they know that we're Christians if we're not shining that light that God has given us? My brothers and sisters, there's a world that's filled with darkness. And he's given us that light to go shine that light in the midst of darkness. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. Rise up. Rise up in splendor, St. Luke's Catholic Church. Your light has come, and the glory of the Lord shines upon you. Amen? Let us stand together for the profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father. one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. My brothers and sisters, gathered as one, let us bring to light the needs and concerns of our community this day. For the church, that through our words and deeds, we may be a light to those who are searching for direction and a sign of hope for those seeking to begin again. Let us pray to the Lord. For our leaders, that they may grow in wisdom and judgment as they lead us into this new year. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who search for God, like the Magi, that they may find God's love and mercy incarnate in every person Regardless of social standing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For God's blessing on the new year, that God will fill the coming days with health of body, mind, and spirit, renew the gifts of the Spirit within us, and inspire us with new ways to share the good news with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers that all who are ill with coronavirus and its variants to be healed. For the frontline workers and caregivers, may they remain healthy and not grow weary. For continued success of the vaccine to rid us of this pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have asked for our prayers, for those whose names are written in our prayer request book, for our RCIA catechumens and candidates, and for those who have died recently, a friend, F. Levering, Fausto, Menchaca, may God grant them everlasting joy and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the special intentions of this Mass, for the reposing soul of Sue Fetzer, Robert and Marge Gallego, 
and Robert Geyanger Jr. May they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord of all, we look to you in our time of need. Watch over us all. Listen to the prayers we make and grant them in your name, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, we didn't know who you was. We didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. didn't know who you was. Sweet little Jesus boy, born long time ago. Sweet little holy child, and we didn't Bless you, Lord God of all creation. Through goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, the offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation be ours through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for all the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, he made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
The are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts you have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by the cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wonder is <clears throat> resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Luke, and with all the saints on whose constant intercessions in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleading to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and wisdom and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
as we stand together with faith and confidence in eternal life. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Please open your green hymnals to number 330, What Child Is This? Number 330. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Renewed by sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated just for short announcements. There is no second collection today, so, uh, but we do have one announcement that it's our parish directory. You know, since I've been here, unfortunately, I've been trying to do a parish directory. Do y'all know when was the last year that y'all did a parish directory? Anybody know? Any guesses? 2007. 2007. We're really supposed to be doing them. They would love for us to do it every three years to give them business, right? But we're supposed to at least be doing it every five years because priests come and go about every six years. And you'd always want some, a priest to be here. So it's been since 2007. I was really surprised when I saw that, that it's been so long since y'all did a parish directory. What it's really about a parish directory is getting to know who your community is. You see each other every Saturday evenings or Sunday mornings, but do you know who that person is? And a parish directory puts the name to the face, and it really helps us become community. So you're not just that person that sits up here in the green shirt. You know, you know that person. Come on, he's, he's in the green shirt. He sits there all the time. Come on, you know him. What's his name? I don't know. I don't know. So please, I want to encourage everybody to please sign up. It's very easy. Everything's electronics now. Everything they're doing it on, online. So uh, if you're having a difficulty with that, we do have someone in the, uh, in the foyer that will be helping you. Once again, this will be published in spring of 2022. The sessions for picture taking will take place from February 14th through February 19th. Next weekend, January the 8th and the 9th, there will be someone in the, in the, from the pictorial directory committee available to assist anyone scheduled for their picture taking sessions. You also may go on the St. Luke website and click onto the link to schedule your appointment. But this is something very dear to my heart because I love pictorial directories. When I was in high school, I did the yearbook. I was the yearbook editor at Flower Bluff High School. So I love looking at pictures and I love taking pictures and I love looking at people. And this is a wonderful way of really for us connected. So I really want to encourage y'all, sign up, get your picture taken. I'm going to take my picture with my dog, Boo, okay? Who always takes this picture with me. So I want to encourage y'all, please con consider doing that next weekend. We'll have someone here to help you. Deacon, you want to help me with the chalice? We have a chalice that goes out to a family, Joe and Valeria Lopez. Are the Lopez's here? There they are, right here. Cowboys. We're gonna go. So we're going to go ahead, and as they're coming forward, I'm going to invite everybody to open up your hymn notebooks, the last page, and we are going to pray this beautiful prayer together of the prayer for vocations. And together, let us pray. God in baptism, you called us by name and made us members of your people, the church. Guide us to know our vocation in life and to respond by living your spirit of holiness. For your greater glory and for the service of your people, raise up dedicated and generous members who will serve their lives as women and men religious, priests, deacons, married or single. Send your spirit to guide and strengthen us so we may serve your people, following the example of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we offer this prayer, amen. And may almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. We always like to recognize visitors from out of town or anybody here for the very first time. I think I saw a visitor back here. I think his name is Deacon Richard. Oh my gosh, Deacon Richard and his wife, beautiful wife, Nora, is here for the first time. Stand up, you guys. We got visitors. We got a celebrity. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my goodness, that's a celebrity. You guys don't know how popular this guy, everybody knows him, the Pope knows him, okay? Oh gosh. <laughs> everybody celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, today or anytime this week, there is an anniversary, how many years? 11 years of marriage today, congratulations. Happy, birth, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. We got more birthday, more birthdays, birthday, lots of birthdays over, birthday, birthday. Is this an anniversary over here or are these just birthdays? Anniversary, how many years? 42 years of marriage, congratulations, congratulations. And another marriage, how many years? 21 years of marriage, congratulations. Wow, that's awesome, you guys. Let's, let's extend our hands upon our brothers and sisters and give them our blessings. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life, the gift of our brothers and sisters celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries. Lord, send down your spirit upon them. Bless them, guide them, protect them, and lead them always towards your eternal kingdom. May the Spirit of God come upon you and bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Once again, please open your green hymnals to number 303, Joy to the World, number 303. Happy New Year, everyone.